Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 6, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Late last week, Xavier looked at an interesting Word document that had an odd New Line character in the beginning that was then also used to obfuscate the document but apparently what it also did is it rendered it as an invalid document in certain versions of vert now what we have here is something that's often referred to as the resiliency principle in networking where well uh, features and documents that uh, aren't quite standard compliant will actually sometimes be parsed correctly just in order to make interoperability work but that of course will hurt uh, malware detection that's now considering this particular document as invalid and figures that it doesn't have to inspect it for example in this case diddy's own zip dump tool was not able to actually deal with this document because it was considered a malform and well, I was sort of considering actually doing today's podcast without mentioning Zoom, but just can't help it but to point out of an analysis of Zoom's encryption that was performed by uh, Bill Marchuk and John Scott Railton from the Citizens Lab. This is pretty interesting in so far as, well, a couple of claims that Zoom makes about its, inscri- its encryption are actually just not true. First of all, they're promising end-to-end encryption. End-to-end encryption usually means, well, user-to-user, but at best you're getting user-to-server kind of from Zoom and also all users that participate in a particular meeting will share the same encryption key. In itself, this may be something that's sort of acceptable given that they also all share the same content, but these encryption keys actually come from servers that may be located in China. And those keys are only 128 bits, which wouldn't be really all that terrible, but Zoom promises 256 bits on its website. The encryption method AES, again, not really all that bad, but Zoom selected to use the ECB mode, which yes, encrypts, but does leave in particular for video, some of the patterns still visible. So yes, yet another hit against Zoom, and uh, we actually had this weekend uh, webcast by uh, Mick Douglas, who is going over some of the existing problems with Zoom and how to protect yourself, and uh, well, uh, how to sort of really uh, deal with the risk uh, that Zoom uh, poses, so whether or not that's something you do want to use or not want to use, really depends on uh, what kind of meetings you are conducting. And Mozilla fixed two critical vulnerabilities in Firefox on Friday. Now, a little bit unusual for Firefox to be updated on a Friday, but the reason for this is to use after free vulnerabilities that are already being exploited in the wild in targeted attacks. So double check that you are running Firefox 74.0.1 or ESR 68.6.1. These are the versions that are safe. And well, Firefox tends to be pretty good about updating itself. So just checking should be sufficient. Now, once you have outgrown Zoom, you may switch to the next cool kit on the instant messaging blog, and that's Discord. Now, Discord uh, has a little bit of different problem in that a lot of its code base is written in JavaScript, and there is no real good integrity check of the client software. And that has now been used uh, multiple times by something called called Anarchy Grabber to inject additional JavaScript on the client that will then steal credentials. 
So this is a malware that's being loaded into essentially the live uh, Discord client that a user already has installed. It's not that the user would necessarily download a malicious Discord client. It's also not being distributed as part of Discord, just its structure of just a bunch of JavaScript files makes it pretty easy for an attacker to sort of inject their additional code. And with Discord itself, not checking the integrity of its code, base, well, there is no warning for the user. So no patch for this one, just uh, don't launch the anarchy crabber on your system. With the hard part, of course, being that it doesn't necessarily arrive with the evil malware label attached to it. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.